When you want. Okay, hello everybody and welcome to this talk about uh, the path to CDI2. Uh, the first title I had was uh, the long and winding road to CDI2, but I choose a more uh, politically correct title for uh, this presentation. So I'm Antoine Sabaudurand, I'm working at Red Hat, and uh, I'm the cuspec lead on the CDI specification with uh, Pete Muir. Uh, I'm also involved in the CDI community development, and uh, I'm also a tech lead on a little project called Agorava, which is related to a social network and CDI. You can follow me on this Twitter handle. So what this is about, what are we going to talk about? We st we'll start with a, a fast flashback on CDI specification, version 1, 1.1 1, 1, and 1.2. And after that, I will uh, try to explain how we uh, are going to gather feedback uh, for uh, all the features uh, for CDI2. How we manage to gather all the feedback from the community and uh, uh, over spec. After that, we will deal with uh, the CDI2 new feature we want to include, we wish to include uh, in this new version. Uh, to finish with uh, the, the fact that uh, everybody is uh, welcome to the specification and can contribute to it. So let's start with the good news. Uh, the CDI2 specification started one month ago. So it's a GSR365, and it was the first Java E8 GSR to be proposed and voted. So hooray. Uh, right now, the expert group is still in formation. So it's still open, you can come, you can decide to be part of the specification. Uh, we also are, have a very open uh, mind uh, in our organization and we, we want to have the best uh, from the community, so it's open to everyone. Uh, you don't have to be part of the GCP or the expert group to contribute to, uh, to CDI. Uh, all contributions are accepted. So let's go back in the past to, to see what was the, the story of uh, CDI, what happened previously. Uh, the first version of CDI was released in uh, 2009, and uh, it was uh, uh, one of the major uh, GSR for Java E6. And we had uh, an evolution in Java E7, released in uh, June 2013, and uh, at the beginning of the year, we released um, a maintenance release on the CDI, it was the 1.2, and as I said, the CDI2 specification starts uh, in September, and we plan to release uh, the final version in 2016. Uh, I won't go through all the bullet points in, uh, in different versions, but CDI1 was uh, a, a very big uh, a specification included in, in Java E6. In, it introduced dependency junction uh, as a standard in uh, Java E. Uh, it added it in a very specific way, a, a type safe way uh, in, uh, in uh, Java E. And it, it bring another stuff very interesting uh, to the, the platform. It added the ability to decorate, to add AOP to uh, to uh, Java E uh, by decorating or uh, intercepting the different object uh, with a type safe approach. And it has also uh, an event bus that uh, will allow to trigger and listen to different events with the, the observer pattern. And finally, one of the most interesting thing that was introduced by CDI, uh, in my opinion, is the uh, CDI SPI and the possibility to extend CDI with the portable extension mechanism. Uh, this way um, allow to extend uh, okay, CDI, but also Java E. It's a way to add feature to Java E uh, in a natural way uh, without waiting for a new release of Java E. And that was a very big uh, novelty in uh, Java E6. With Java E7, we release CDI 1.1. Uh, I won't go through all the points again, but in fact, it was uh, mainly 
correction from CDI one. Uh, it had uh, more information about uh, metadata on bean interceptor event. It had uh, another way to uh, deal with scope and bring solution to activate scope uh, uh, easier in an easier way. And the fact that with atollable context, we, we could uh, start to uh, destroy our bin without waiting for the context to be, uh, to be destroyed by the system. So a better control of all, uh, of all the managed bin in the CDI bin manager. Uh, there was also some move from uh, CDI specification to interceptor specification, for instance. So we, we, we add things to the Java AE platform, we gave things to Java AE platform, the interceptor binding, to bring a better integration with Java AE. At the beginning of the year, we released a maintenance release on CDI. Uh, it was mainly clarification in the spec. So uh, there was part that were re re rewritten, uh, uh, especially the CDI life cycle that was a bit uh, hard to read, and uh, that was probably the reason that most people uh, are uh, reluctant to use the portable extension solution because uh, it, it was a bit hard to understand. And we also uh, uh, review all the events part. That's for the specification. For the, uh, for the, 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 the code, we also correct a big bug regarding being defining annotation. That was uh, uh, an issue uh, for having uh, over GSR 3.3.0 uh, framework in Java E. So uh, let's say Spring and Goose that were uh, crashing uh, under Java E uh, server. So it's corrected with CDI 1.2. And the last point, the important point, CDI 1.2 is, is the first version uh, that includes uh, an OSGI official support in CDI. Okay, let's talk now about how we uh, are gathering feedback for CDI 2. The, the main idea of this part is to explain that all the features that I will show you later are not features that we uh, imagine, imagined. Uh, we get them from different sources and not only uh, from the, the expert group. The different sources are these. The first one, I will deal with this point uh, just after, is a survey. We did a survey to the community to gather the feedback of the community. Uh, I will detail the survey just after. We also have a Jira uh, website, and we, we are taking all the feature requests in Jira to uh, feed our uh, list of features for CDI2. Of course, we also uh, spoke with other spec lead and other specs to understand what they need to better integrate this with CDI, especially JaxRS and WebSocket. Uh, spec lead. Uh, we also intend to discuss with JMS spec lead to have their feedback and know what they need to have a better integration with CDI. And of course, we also add our own <laughs> feature list as uh, an expert group and uh, the, the experience that we, we, what we had on uh, CDI one. So let's talk about this survey rapidly. Uh, so in fact, there, there were two surveys. We, we did a first survey before the survey. The first one was uh, more informal to gather all the wishes that people wanted uh, to see on CDI. Uh, after this first survey, we had a, a full list of features coming from the community, and we filtered it, ordered it, and proposed those uh, features uh, as a list to rate, so 20 new features to rate from one to five. It runs during one month, and uh, there were nearly uh, 300 participants. So let's check about the answer. Uh, so the first point is who answered this survey? The, the good news is that most, uh, the majority of people answering this survey uh, were developer using CDI, not uh, the, the framework developer or uh, advanced developer. It was casual user. Uh, we also asked uh, about the CDI version people were using. So we saw that there was already, at the beginning of the year, a uh, great adoption of CDI 1.1 uh, on Java E7. Uh, some of the people were yet using uh, CDI 1.2, uh, 
uh, even if it was released uh, one month before. And lastly, we also ask people, uh, how do they use CDI? So most people are using it uh, still in a Java EE server, in plain Java EE server. So I won't go through all the items of the results, but you can see them each feature uh, in, the, uh, in the right order, with the preferred uh, first and the less preferred last. Uh, I will uh, do a focus on uh, each feature with a star on the list. But you can see that the first point in this list, the first thing that people wished for, are uh, asynchronous uh, function. Either on method call, like it is uh, already there in EGB, or uh, on event. We also add in a very high uh, uh, step the fact that people wanted to have the possibility to bootstrap CDI outside Java E and Java EC. That's a big focus that we have, and I will uh, detail that just after. We also have the uh, wish regarding uh, security support. Uh, and that's a point that we will introduce, of course, in CDI2. Uh, regarding uh, event control, we also have some feedback on that. And people want to be able to decide uh, if the event chain uh, could be uh, stopped in, in the different call and things like that. OK, I won't go through all, uh, all the items here. Uh, but the, the fact that we are also uh, not in the first, uh, not in the first feature, but in the twin first 20, the fact that people ask CDI parts what was very interesting for us because we think it could be a nice thing to have to, uh, for the future of CDI. Uh, I'll, I'll show that just after. So from this list and this feedback, and the big picture we had on CDI, uh, we start producing uh, a list, a real list of features. In, in fact, the big picture of CDI, the big axe. Uh, before going to this description, uh, you have to keep in mind that we start to work one month ago. And so today, there is no decision on this point. Uh, if, you, if you see something that you like in what I'm going to show you, uh, you can come and contribute. It's a better, it's a best solution to be sure that it will be included in CDI2. If you don't like the feature I will show you, you can also come to the mailing list and discuss with us to say, oh, no, I think it's not a good idea. Uh, and uh, okay, you, can, you give your explanation and we can start a, a discussion uh, on the subject. So to start on the let's say the big picture, the 10,000 mile, the 10,000 feet view of CDI2, uh, the first, the most important things that we have to, to, to work on or decide if we go for it or not is modularity. Uh, modularity, in fact, in fact, is the, the fact that we want to provide a kind of suspect in CDI. Uh, this suspect would be called parts, and they, can be, they could be used independently uh, and, uh, and each part would have uh, its own implementation. So why would we do that? In fact, there are two main reasons for that. Uh, the first uh, is that we want to add new features to CDI. In CDI2, we will add a lot of new features, or correct existing feature, but we will add new feature. And the, the problem is that we want to, to avoid making CDI a big specification, a bloated spec, and uh, we want to find a way to, to have little parts that we can use independently and avoid that. The second reason for modularity uh, is that if we have this part, I think it will help CDI adoption. Uh, today we have feedback from third party uh, 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 users especially uh, specification. Uh, and they say that uh, CDI is usually too big for them. Uh, I will give uh, an example of uh, Jack Ceres uh, saying that their, implement, their reference implementation, Jersey, uh, 
as a size of uh, 400 kilobytes, and the reference implementation of CDI, GBus Weld, as a size of 4 megabytes. So it's 10 times bigger. And they say, OK, if we, if we uh, build uh, the new version of um, JAXRS and have a strong dependency on CDI, we, we don't want to tell our users, OK, you have to use CDI. It's better to use CDI. But in your application, you have to bring with you uh, something 10 times bigger than the, uh, the basic framework to, uh, to assure the, the component stuff. If we add parts, we could provide a little bit of the specification, uh, helping other spec to use only what they need. So what about those parts? Today we are viewing, you are thinking about three parts. The first would be a CDI light uh, specific parts, not specification, subspec. So it would provide dependency injection without all the bells and whistles uh, in uh, CDI, without events, without context, AOP, or SP SPI. Uh, it will be basic dependency injection. So the implementation would be very light and could be used, for instance, for JAXRS or other uh, specification. And it could, it also, it also would provide uh, a dependency injection solution for a mobile or constraint platform. It, it would be a nice thing. The second part we are thinking about is an uh, events part. So take the, all the event stuff in CDI, the event bus, the observer, and, and, uh, and so on and provide a subspec with this event uh, bus. So it's also something that people uh, asked to be able to trigger event and listen to event without uh, having to, uh, to get all the stuff in CDI, the dependency injection, the SPI, the portable extension, and so on. And lastly, the last part would be the full CDI with all the stuff, with all the, the powerful uh, uh, extension but which weight, uh, the, the, the size we know. So we've got a bunch of challenge uh, to work on modularity. The first is quite obvious, but when we are working on a specification, we have to be sure of what we are doing because we can go back. In f Once it's written, <laughs> you have to live with it forever. So uh, we have to discuss about those parts to be sure that it's not too much or not enough uh, precise. So to speak about granularity. The second challenge is the fact that if we go this way, we should provide reference implementation on TCK for each part. So here, instead of having one reference implementation and one TCK, we, we would have three of them. That's for the bad news. For the good news is that each of these parts would be a sub-part of the implementation. So we can imagine to, to find a way to cut the implementation to provide uh, the reference implementation for each part. So the, it, it could be quite uh, straightforward, but it could be also become a huge work if we make mistake on that. OK, we also want to provide with CDI uh, Java EC support. What's, what is it? It is the, the possibility to use CDI outside Java EE. Right now you can do that. You can do that because implementation provide a way to boot CDI outside Java EE. But uh, this way to boot CDI is not specified. It's not st standard. It's in each specification with uh, their own uh, way to, of doing it. So why, why would you need uh, to have Java EC support? The first point is to provide an, uh, a way to use CDI to build new stacks. Uh, for instance, we have uh, an, an example of uh, a CDI contributor who created uh, a new stack with CDI, REST EC, and Undertow. So it's not it's not uh, a desktop application, it's an application server, but a new application server based on CDI as a programming model. So today, it, it did that with the, um, the capability, the possibility of integration of Weld. 
to, uh, tomorrow, we want to provide the same possibility, but at the spec level. And again, uh, I think Java AC support will probably boost CDI adoption because we, we've got a bunch of spec in Java AE, for instance, GPA, for instance, JAXRS, uh, the servlet specification, uh, that can uh, be booted in, uh, in Java AC. And they cannot use CDI right now because if you boot JAXRS in Java AC, for instance, and that CDI cannot be boot in Java SE. You can't use CDI with JAXRS. So we need to provide the same support than this specification to be sure that uh, they will be able to, to use CDI uh, outside Java E. So what, what are the challenges uh, regarding Java SE support? The first is not very hard, but can be uh, a bit long. Uh, we have a lot of reference on Java of Java EE across the specification. So we have to uh, harvest all these little uh, reference to Java EE in the specification where, when we talk about session bin, resource, and so on, and uh, create a new chapter dealing only with that and saying, okay, what about what about uh, 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 Java? Uh, what about CDI when it is used in a Java E environment? That's the first part. Uh, the second challenge is to decide what existing uh, Java EC support we want to standardize. Today we have three solutions. We have the solution coming from Weld. We have the solution coming from Open Web Bins. So the both implementation are the solution to be booted. In, uh, in Java AC. And the last one is the solution provided by Apache Delta Spike, which provides an abstract, an abstract solution to boot CDI in Java AC. So we have to discuss the pro and cons of each solution and perhaps create a, a fourth one for the specification. <laughs> and the last challenge is the fact that we will have to add an SPI to CDI to ease its integration with other framework spec. Let me give you an example. When you use CDI in Java E, you've got all the, the technical stuff around, like the transactional manager. Uh, you, have, uh, you have feature in CDI, for example, the observers that are linked to the transactional manager. If you get CDI outside uh, Java E to Java EC, you need to provide a way to hook those uh, technological brick to be able to, uh, to create your new stack. So we have a work again on that. Next uh, big, picture, big uh, feature we want to, uh, to work on is on events. We want to uh, enhance events in CDI. Uh, the first point being uh, that we need to provide asynchronous events. So it's it seems quite for, uh, straightforward uh, saying said like that, but it can be a bit cumbersome because we have today uh, multiple types of events. We have standard event and we have event linked to uh, transaction. We have event, we have observer that are linked to uh, the end of the transaction. If it succeeds, if it, if it succeed, if it uh, fail, etc. Look, we have to think about that and what we support, what we don't support. The second point is the fact that it would be nice to have a way to order events. Today, ev uh, events are called, observers are called in uh, unknown order, in random order. We would like to be able to say, okay, th that will be the first, I this observer has a priority of one, this one of two, etc., etc. And last point, very interesting uh, also, is the possibility to give a range to events. The, the idea behind that is to say, okay, I trigger this event and the range of this event is only the current application, the current war, for instance. But it can be also the current ERR. And it can be also an event for the whole server or the whole cluster. So we could imagine to provide a way to have an event bus at the server level, uh, like a kind of uh, light GMS at the server level for the cluster also. So that's also a feature we want to work on. 
Next, we want to enhance all the things around uh, aspects orienting programming in uh, CGI. So for instance, today, there is no possibility to put interceptor or decorator uh, on a custom or produced bin. We want to provide that in CDI too. We want also to provide a better way to control the chaining of interceptor. Be able to check uh, in uh, a given interceptor what interceptor were called before, what interceptor will be called after, and to decide, okay, uh, stop the chain of interceptor because th there is a condition to, uh, that allow me to do that. And the last point, uh, which is uh, uh, in, uh, I have to say, in heavy discussion right now on the mailing list, uh, is the, f the, w the feature that will add support of uh, AOP on inner calls. Today, when you uh, add an interceptor on a method or a bin, this interceptor is only activated if you call this method from outside the bin. Uh, that what we want to provide is the way to have this interceptor or decorator be called if you call the method from another method in the bin. Let's say, let's say you have uh, uh, method A, which is calling method B, and method B has an interceptor. We want the interceptor to be activated. And I'll finish on uh, SPI and uh, context enhancement. So the idea be behind that uh, is to provide a better access to all metadata used by CDI. Today we we only have access to bin metadata. We want to provide access to all the metadata injection point, annotated type, at runtime, to be able to, to access those information from outside CDI, for instance. Uh, we also uh, want to provide a way to add bin at runtime. Today, it's not possible. Tomorrow, if we go to Java IC, we will probably have to work with dynamic language like Groovy, and, and they probably wanted, and they want, to be able to change the, con the content of the bin manager at runtime. And finally, there are also work uh, regarding spec. We want to uh, ease the, the possibility to create new context uh, for third party spec. Once, and the second point is we want to uh, extend the context approach, which, all, which today is very uh, linked to the, the concept of thread. And we want to be able to, uh, to, to create context not linked to thread, like it is done in a new uh, uh, framework, with new response framework, with callback, and so on. Okay, and I will just finish on the contribution on CDI. So I show you all the features we want to put in CDI. And the more we are, the more we'll deliver. So, the specification is open to everyone. You can come on the mailing list on the IRC channel. If you want to join us, you can go on the, on the website or you can follow the CDI spec on Twitter and uh, you can start to bring your contribution. Okay, thank you.